Hello everybody. Today I'm just going to be doing a soft spoken chatty video. This is actually a video that was requested by one of you. It took me so long to find the comment where you suggested this video because I wanted to see if there were any like specifications. So as the title would suggest, I'm going to just be chatting about my favorite movies and TV shows. I think this is such a good request and I'm so glad that you thought of it because I probably wouldn't have. I have a LaCroix next to me, keeping with my like peachy pink look. I don't know how well you'll be able to hear it, but I can hear it inside my mouth. Okay. I can feel it like sticking to my lip gloss. I'm going to start with TV shows because I feel like I am one of like, few people in the world who can never think of a movie that they like, and I wanted this to kind of just be, like, rambly and not too planned, and I can just think of more TV shows that I like, because I watch more TV than movies. I'm not one of those people who, like, I don't know, just, like, puts on a movie or goes to the movie theater a lot, so, yeah, so, the theme that you'll see with uh, pretty much all the shows is I like true crime, true crime inspired shows, creepy things, but not scary because I get really scared easily and can't watch any horror shows, but creepy things are my jam. I'm sure my boyfriend wishes that I could just watch something normal and, like, lighthearted and maybe comedic because every time we sit down to, like, choose a new show on Netflix, I'm always like, ooh, the new murder documentary. And he's like, are you kidding me? Another? I just love it. So, my all-time favorite show is Criminal Minds. I've seen every single episode and it's about to come back. I don't know when you'll see this, but I think it comes back sometime in October, so I am thrilled about it. Um, I love that it's a show that is episodic, which means that each episode is fairly independent of the next. Sorry, I had to just go turn the air off, but it's like YouTube in the sense where each individual video is like its own, or each individual episode is like its own thing, but there are little kind of like personal or like family storylines that go throughout the season or throughout the show. So... Um, yeah, I like that you can, for the most part, kind of just, like, watch any random episode, and it'll be interesting, and there's not too much that you miss. Now, there are a few seasons that are focused on, like, a certain killer that they've try they've been trying to catch for like episode after episode. So those are more like continuous. But yeah, I love it. I love the cast. I love Matthew Gray Goobler, who is uh, Spencer Reed. I love him. I love JJ, 
who is, oh my gosh, I'm trying to think of what her real name is, AJ Cook, I think, um, there have been a few people who have come and gone, um, yeah, those are, those are my, those are my two favorite, I feel like this upcoming season is their last, which is going to make me really sad because, like, I truly do love it. Um, but yeah, I haven't done a very good job of telling you what this show is actually about if you don't know what it's about. It's pretty popular, and like I said, it's been around for a long time. There have been so many seasons. I think they're coming up on the either 13th or 14th season, but it is about, uh, a branch of the FBI called the BAU, the Behavioral Analysis Unit, who track down serial killers. I think they're all serial killers, yeah. Um, it's just so fascinating. I love it. Another show that I really, really like is How to Get Away with Murder. That is on... I think ABC, maybe? Like, I can see it, but I'm having a hard time determining what network it is. Anyway, it's about a group of law students and their law professor who get involved in a series of murders and accidental deaths and it's all about how they deal with it, people coming after them, them covering it up, and um, I mean, there's like so many side plots that make it really interesting, but that's about to come back as well for, I, I feel like maybe the fourth season? I feel like that's right. Maybe third or fourth, but it's really interesting as well. The cast is a bunch of people who I had never seen or heard of before they were on that show so I like that it's like fresh people who I don't already associate with another character uh, Criminal Minds is like that for me as well but I love that show it's really interesting um and it has that like creepy element to it but it's more No, I, like Criminal Minds is very mystery based, but the mystery in How to Get Away with Murder is like more drawn out, so it really hooks you in. And let's see, what are their shows? Okay, in terms of what's on now, I it'll probably be over by the time you see this video because I have so many videos <laughs> recorded. Um, but I love Big Brother. This past season, season 20, was not my favorite at all. Um, at this point, when I'm filming it, I don't know who won, but I'm kind of not really excited about any of them winning. I think it was just kind of boring because one side of the house really dominated. So in Big Brother, there are I want to say 16 people who start out in the house between 16 and 20. I think it's 16. Um, and there's a house created on the CBS set or lot. And um, so they live in this house and it's kind of like Survivor. Is it Survivor? Where they vote people out? Maybe vote people off the island. But basically, each week, someone gets evicted and sent home. And so there's an HOH competition, which stands for Head of Household. So each week, there's a new person in power who gets to nominate two people for eviction. So they're sitting up there. One of them might get evicted. But they play a competition called The Power of Veto. So six people play it. So the two people who are nominated for eviction, 
the HOH and three other people. Um, and they choose it randomly who plays. And whoever wins the power of veto can take one of the eviction nominees off the, what they call off the block. And then the HOH has to put up a replacement. So depending on who wins the power of veto, if one of the people who is on the block wins it, then they would take themselves off and they would be safe. But if like the HOH or someone who's working with the HOH wins the power of veto, they would kind of do one of two things. Either keep the nominations the same and then one of those two people would go home. There's always a target, like one person that either the house or the HOH wants to go home. So they'll either do that or they, the person who wins the power veto will take someone off of the block and this is planned. So they'll backdoor someone where after the power veto competition, they'll take someone off the block and the HOH has to put someone else up who is like their true, uh, Why am I blanking on this? They're true, like the person that they actually want to get out, their target. So it's a way for that person to get evicted without being aware of it initially. Um, and also it's good because unless they get randomly picked to play in the power veto, there's less of a chance for them to win the power veto because if you're on the block then you get to play in the competition and potentially be safe so that's a sneaky thing that they do sometimes um but yeah and then each week it just dwindles and dwindles until there's a top two and then the people in the jury house which begins See, I don't know how many people are in the jury house at the end. I feel like it's a max of 10. But anyway, they vote on who wins. And the winner gets $500,000. And the runner-up, I believe, gets 50000 So, that's a lot of money. Um, okay, let's see. What other shows do I watch? I feel like I'm gonna have to look on Netflix. Well, let's take a little look on my computer. I really don't watch too much TV because I watch so much Netflix. I mean, YouTube. Um. Oh. Okay, one I didn't talk about. Is Riverdale. I absolutely love Riverdale. It's based off of the Archie comics and so it's about this group of high schoolers. I, I will never understand why shows continually cast people who are in their 20s to play high school roles. Anyway, there, it's this group of high schoolers who live in this adorable small town that's like, it's modern. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like holding my sweater all weird. Um, it's modern because they have like iPhones and stuff like that, but you can tell that it is inspired by kind of like the 50s, I want to say. They spend a lot of time at this diner called Pops. That's one of my favorite words, by the way. Pop, 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 pop. Um, and there are just, there's mysteries and drama 
and the cinematography is beautiful. It has like a kind of like dark overcast, but very colorful at the same time. I don't know if that even makes sense, but it's beautiful to watch. I love the actors. Um, it's Lily Reinhardt, who is stunning. Oh my god, she's beautiful. KJ Appa, Cole Sprouse, and oh my god, who plays Veronica? I, I think it's Camila Mendez. That sounds right. But I love that a lot. It's about to come back for its third season. Okay. Here we go. Why didn't I start out on Netflix? Because here are all my favorite shows. Some of them are ones that I'm not currently watching, but do love. The Office. I mean, duh, right? Who doesn't love The Office? It is so hilarious. There are nine seasons, so there are tons of episodes to binge watch on on Netflix. Um, my my favorite episodes by far are the stress relief ones. Oh my god. When when Angela throws her cat up into the ceiling, I die every time. It is so hilarious. And then when Michael tries to... I think it's Michael. It might be Kevin, actually. Tries to bust the window with the projector. It's just... It's the most hilarious thing ever. And then later in the episode, when they're doing CPR, and they're totally just being so annoying to the poor woman who's trying to do the, like, the class demonstration. And when Dwight goes up and is like, here, I'll do it, and he cuts the face off of the mask and turns around, oh my god, I mean, it's just, it's the most hilarious thing ever. So, the whole show is really good, and it stays really good throughout the whole thing. I mean, there were episodes where I cried because I got so invested. So, if, you, if you're one of the people who hasn't seen it, I would highly recommend that you do watch it at some point. The episodes are short as well, so that makes it really nice. If you just want to, if you just have like 20 or 30 minutes to watch a show, um, you can watch an episode of The Office. I also loved The Vampire Diaries. It, like, it's just so my vibe. A long time ago, probably in high school, um, I was obsessed with, like, vampires and all, all of that sort of stuff. Um, I'm trying to think of when Vampire Diaries even came out. Because it says eight seasons. So I feel like it had to have started when I was in high school. And I watched it for a long time and then stopped watching it because it got to a point where I wasn't as interested anymore. Let's see. 2009. Oh my gosh. That sounds like it's forever ago. I mean, it was. It was nine years ago. Oh my god, I feel so old. But yeah, and it finished March 10th, 2017. So it's about, oh my gosh, it, okay, I'm going to tell you like the absolute basic plot line because there's about a billion things that happen. But it's about this girl, Elena, who was played by Nina Dobrev, again, stunning. And she meets these brothers, Stefan and Damon, who are played by, um, Stefan is played by Paul Wesley, and, uh, Damon is Ian Summerhalder. So hot, by the way. And, um, she meets them and throughout the series falls in love with both of them. And then there's about, I'm, I mean... The amount of side plots and, like, crazy things that end up happening is, like, 
insane. <laughs> I would try to explain it to my mom, like, because she would occasionally be in the room when I would watch it. She would be like, wait, what? Who's that? Or what? And I would just be like, I can't even explain it to you because there's, <laughs> even from one episode to the next, if you don't watch, you have no context for the next episode. But it's, it finished in a really interesting way. I don't think everyone liked it, but I was pretty satisfied with the ending. I cried. I was like, oh no. Because <laughs> it was, it was kind of sad, but um, let's see what else. I've watched all of Friends. I did like Friends, but The Office is by far better in my opinion. Um, those are pretty much the only shows that I'd like really, really love. Um, going through my Netflix, I have Pretty Little Liars, which, you know, I watched all 10 million of those episodes and that was good as well. Um, and then Mindhunter, which is a Netflix original. Again, it's about, <laughs> it's set in, I think the seventies and it's about these FBI agents who are kind of just starting the like serial killer like investigation type of thing, like what makes a serial killer or yeah, pretty much that, but it's really interesting. Again, I love that it is like kind of gloomy. Um, it's similar to Riverdale in that way where it's kind of like dull and gloomy and there's kind of like an overcast feeling all the time, but the colors are like fresh and like vibrant when appropriate. I just, it's another one that I love, cinematographic, cinematographically, that was not right, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I also, okay, on a totally different note, I love, uh, Fixer Upper and House Hunters, my boyfriend and I used to watch HGTV, um, so much, I love Joanna Gaines. She is like my home style icon. I love her. I want to be her. I want to live on a farm and have a bunch of kids and just like grow this beautiful garden and have all these animals and be her. <laughs> Let me know if you can relate because I think a lot of girls can. Um, let's see. I think that's pretty much it as for TV shows that are really coming to my mind. Um, and really, the only movie that I can really think about that I really, really like and, like, stands out to me is The Great Gatsby with Leonardo DiCaprio. I read the book in high school along with a bunch of other people, and the movie is, oh my gosh, beautiful. It is... I think my favorite movie visually, excuse me, it's set in the 20s, the roaring 20s, so the, the costume, I say costumes because obviously they're actors, but, um, the clothing and just the extravagance of it and, oh my gosh, the, the homes that they show and the parties and all of the bright colors. Oh my gosh. I just, I love it. I love the way it was filmed. It's stunning. And also the plot line is so interesting. It's, it's that kind of like, I don't want to say this and then get like dragged for not being correct, but I feel like it's that like Romeo and Juliet type of love story where there's two people who shouldn't be together because there are other people that they should be with or are with, but they want to be together so bad. And it's just kind of like a tragic, kind of like sad love story. But 
I really like it and would highly recommend it um, if you haven't seen it already. Um, in that same vein, I love Titanic. <laughs> I used to watch that when I was like kind of a young kid, which is kind of interesting, but that's, yeah, I did. Um, let's see, other movies. See, I'm not a movie buff. I can't think of like any movies. I love like Disney movies, like old Disney movies, like you know if you're if you're like a nineties, early two thousands kid, like the the Disney Channel movies. Um I'm just excited that fall is coming and the like thirty one days of Halloween is coming up on TV because I can't wait to watch Halloween Town. So good. So good. My boyfriend said that he had never seen it, and I was just like, what? <laughs> Did you even live in the same time period as me? Like, how have you not seen Halloween Town? It's so good. So I'm definitely going to be watching that. Um, a family tradition that we have for the holiday time is to watch the National Lampoon Christmas Vacation. It's so good. I, I can, like, visually like, see the whole movie in my head, <laughs> there are just so many hilarious parts, so I do love that one, um, I don't know, that's all I can think of right now, I would have to really sit down and look through, like, Netflix or just, like, recent movie releases to see what other ones I would talk about, but I think this video has been pretty long, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know what your favorite movies and TV shows are in the comments down below because I've got a lot of free time on my hands and would love to start up a new show. Okay, maybe not start up a new show now because like the, the three shows that I'm like really obsessed with, Riverdale, Criminal Minds, and How to Get Away with Murder are all coming back in the next few weeks. So. I'm gonna have plenty of TV to watch, but maybe some movies. If you have good movie suggestions, leave those down below. I need to watch Black Panther because that was recently released on Netflix and never saw it in the theater for whatever reason. But, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next one. Good night.